Emily, it's Thursday, and today I'm going to teach you something. So lately in my World of the Arts class, we've been talking about art from 1900 to the 1920s. Around this time, art was mainly centered around Paris, France, in one specific village on the outskirts of town called Manmar. I am probably pronouncing this wrong, I am very sorry, I am not French at all. Anyway, this little village was absolutely crawling with artists. They were everywhere, absolutely saturating Mamar with this crazy, artsy, bohemian vibe. Picasso had a studio there. Artists like Matisse, Van Gogh, Degas, Manet, and Monet lived in this village in, in nearby Paris. Even if they lived outside of the town, they would come in to just absorb the culture and be around all of the artsy people. To see all of their fellow artists making art and just living their lives. It was completely normal to just have artists sitting in the streets just making art. Like, it would be totally fine to just walk down the road and see Pablo Picasso just sitting there making a masterpiece. Of course, there wasn't only art being made in Mimar. Plenty of composers were writing music inspired by the village, and operas were being set there like La Boheme, which is what Brent was based off of. Jazz was just coming into being and it was flourishing in the village. Writers were also flocking to it, like F. Scott Fitzgerald, Ernest Hemingway, Langston Hughes. They were all coming to see the new artistic revolution that was taking place in a small village outside Paris. Of course it wasn't like the nicest place ever, like the most rich, because there are just artists living there. They're like starving artists. One of them said, If I were to starve, I might as well starve where the food is good and the people are agreeable. Since there are so many artists inhabiting Mimar, like so many people in such a small town, there had to be entertainment for them. So they all went to the Moulin Rouge. It was like this really gritty, scandalous cabaret theater that was famous for its can-can dancers. You've probably seen the movie with Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman. Of course, that's a very fictionalized version of the place, but that's generally the kind of feel that it had. There was actually an elephant outside. They had, it wasn't a real elephant, but like in the movie, you know, how she like lives in the elephant? They actually had an elephant. So cool. They also did have a windmill like in the movie, and it's called Moulin de la Galette. When artists first started coming to Mamar, there was a restaurant that was open beneath the windmill so they could all like hang out near the Moulin Rouge and get all their like awesome inspiration from there. So now that Nanarimo is over, I'm thinking about the next novel I want to write, even though the one I'm currently writing isn't done yet. And I'm considering setting it in Mamar. It's just such a cool environment. The fact that all of these artists lived in the same place doing what they loved with other people who appreciated it. I wish we still had stuff like that. Now art is pretty much just everywhere and there's no definitive center for it. I wish that we still had world-renowned villages outside Paris that housed dozens of artists and was famous for the can-can. I just think that might be kind of nice. Well, that's all I've got for you today, Emily. DFTBA and I'll see you soon.